Well, folks, that was a bit of a hiding. Springboks, 43 points to 12 winners over the Wallabies. We'll go through some key events and stats. You guys can let us know your thoughts, but goodness gracious me. Lopsided, man, and geez, those South African wingers. Very, very ominous signs, but um, yeah, great atmosphere. I crawled out of bed. I should say I crawled off the couch at just after 3 o'clock in the morning here. As I was sitting there making some toast to wake myself up, I had the anthems going, and even from the anthems, I feel like you could feel there was a bit of oomph about this game, which was nice. Both the anthems were sung really well, and boy, did the crowd get behind that South African anthem. They had the flyover. It was, you could just feel it. It was something just electric in the air, which, as I said, at three in the morning uh, is pretty pleasing. It's good to kind of wake me up and... Um, yeah, the game didn't let us down in that regard. Although the crowd were silenced a little bit early because it's the Aussies who got on the board first. I mean, kind of tentative start. Libok has to catch the kickoff initially because uh, it goes over the South African lifting pod. And uh, Van Staden wins an early breakdown penalty. Uh, Libok has a nice shot at goal, but it's just short. It's a, it's a long kick. He can't quite nail it. Uh, Nick White's putting in a bunch of box kicks and LaRue has to field a really, really... Difficult looking kind of swirling up and under from uh, from Hodge. But man, it's the Australians on eight minutes. It's um, maybe like their fifth line out early. Like there's a lot of line out ball early. And it's the first one that gets pinched. Uh, Klain is, is going up all day long. And he finally gets one. But it's Ala Alatoa who kind of pounces on the line out ball that's been stolen. And um, yeah, from that kind of broken play they're able to get it wide to Corin Betty and geez he's got some gas it all just seemed a bit too easy but sometimes you know it is that stolen line out that loose ball that bounce pass or whatever it is that just it just opens up a little bit of space so misconversion from Hodge but 5-0 five 5-0 nil. Five nil to the uh the Wallabies early and if you're gonna go into Pretoria in that kind of atmosphere and just turn it down a notch you think maybe you're going to be in with a chance. Now, obviously, look at the scoreboard. It wasn't to be, but it was the ideal start from the Wallabies. If they'd kicked the conversion, maybe even a bit better. But still, they couldn't have asked for much more in the opening 10 minutes. But from the restart, man, the, the box win a, turn, uh, a turnover uh, by holding the Aussie guy up in the tackle. And a uh, good chance to hit back. They get advantage because the Aussie guys are offside. And uh, Libok hits that one. So... That try is immediately reduced down to a two-pointer with the, with the Springbok penalty, pretty much, as I said, right from the restart. So it's a good way, from a Springbok's point of view, to kind of nullify the points you've you've just conceded. So that five-pointer, as I said, uh, it's now only a two-point deficit. And then, man, on 15 minutes, we saw what is potentially going to be seen a bit more of in 2023, I would imagine, and that was the South African backs just cutting absolutely loose it starts with Aronsa on the left wing and he's the guy who's going to finish it but it starts with him uh he's making a good attacking play he gets brought down they shift it to the other side of the field it's kind of wide wide stuff from them it's moody out on the right wing it's larue as well key kind of playmaker in that springbok back line getting it wide to moody and then uh back left again so it's just so hard when they're that quick and uh, that able to shift the ball as wide as quickly as they did um yeah man the wallabies couldn't stop it and aronsa goes over for his first untouched man because yeah there was just too much ground being covered so 10 points to five to the spring box they go in front and they will not relinquish that lead for the remainder of the game they will go on to score 40 um, what are it 43 43 unanswered points yeah it gets pretty hairy from the australians but um yeah, I, I did feel like the Australians had chances in that first half. It's not like, like second half, it was largely, as James Slipper said in the on-field interview, it was largely defending, but they did have some chances. I mean, the South Africans had them as well. Like, Libok had a really nice line break, which shows what he can bring to the team, but they couldn't really capitalize on it. Um, then uh, Nick White put in a nice kick from a bit of pressure from the Aussies to, to make the Springboks have like a five-meter five meter line-out throw on their own line. And uh, I seem to remember the Libok clearance wasn't that great. Kind of shanked it, but the Aussies couldn't do anything with that kind of attacking opportunity. You know what I mean? Like they had they had a bit of territory. They had a chance. 
I mean, Hodge had a long shot on like 24 minutes after a breakdown penalty, but it goes wide. So there's three points left out there. You know, that would have made it 10 points to eight. Would have been a two-point deficit to Australia. Well, with Australia chasing, but um, nah, not to be. That one misses. And then Aronser. No mistake from that, man. It's a line-out move from the South Africans. It's pretty simple, but it's pretty sweet, man. Like, it looks like they're going to set them all. Van Staden peels off blindside. Bongi comes out of nowhere, and then he gets it to Aronser, who's just able to go over 17-5. Crown is absolutely loving it. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those ones, man. If you score your points and the opposition doesn't take theirs, the scoreboard just starts to get away, and it's looking like that at 17-5. Uh, Pete Samu has to come on because Tom Hooper goes off, which is unfortunate for the guy on his debut, but more South African pressure, soft Australian uh, offside penalty, but they're kind of able to hang on. Like, it's still not game over. Like, James Slipper at one point, of all people, just pounces on a, uh, a ball that comes out the back of a ruck, and he boots it clear. So they're kind of hanging on for grim death at that point. And then uh, Hodgie does have one chance for a very long shot before halftime. But it is just short. But man, you're looking at the halftime stats and South Africa's had 63% possession. Territory's kind of even because the Aussie have been doing a lot of kicking. They've actually kicked more than South Africa in that first half. But clean breaks, 7-2. to two. Ominous. The South Africans are threatening to really cut loose, man. And the South Africans have had 10 turnovers conceded to the Aussies four. I know they've had more ball, so that makes more sense. But you can imagine if the, if the box in the second half can cut down on some of the drop ball... Or like, you know, um, turnovers conceded and keep up with the clean breaks. It's going to get pretty messy. And so it does. Uh, second half, I mean, more South African pressure. As I said, the second half is largely just South African pressure. The Aussies aren't really able to fire many shots. Vermeulen goes close. Aussie win another turnover to get out of jail. Uh, Kitsoff is able to win a turnover when Vunivalu... Catches a high ball, the South Africans just flood the breakdown. They win that turnover, so it's a chance for a South African line out. But then they overthrow it, so it's a missed opportunity. But then Cooper kicks that out on the full. Like, if you're going to get back into the game, man, you can't be making errors like that down your own end. And South Africa punished it. You make an error enough times, and you're going to get punished. Aronsa gets his hat trick. I mean, there's a big carry from Van Staden in the build-up. There's a big carry from Peter Steff to Toy. In the build-up, but it's that final pass from Arm, which the TMO checked to make sure it wasn't full, but no, it was it was lateral. And uh, yeah, Aronson with three on-rushing Australian defenders, able to just cut back inside and go for his hat-trick try. So it's pretty sweet, man. I know if you're an Aussie fan, this is pretty brutal stuff, but that was a pretty nice try. And as I said, it does kind of come back to that failure to exit on failed um, South African line-out ball earlier. So they had a chance to exit, don't take it, and the South African second time punish. So 22-5, South Africa get held up on a mall on 53. And then uh, TMO, I think at the advice of the old um, touch judge, was it Piati, has a wee word. Maybe you need to just check to see if that mall was uh, legit held up or it was pulled down. Well, it was pulled down by Parecki. It's a penalty try and a yellow card, man. So, as I said, it's um, yeah, it's, it's getting it's getting pretty messy by that point. Now you are thinking during this yellow card period, it's gonna get it's gonna get worse. But South Africa aren't able to can aren't able to um, capitalize on this yellow card period, which was a little bit surprising. They did have one um, denied. Libok got denied a try when um, Vunivalu again had kind of lost the ball in the tackle, but they ruled that Peter Steff had a hand in it, just knocking it forward. So there was one chalked off try. There was some massive Springbok scrums and penalties and whatnot, but ultimately for the Aussies, no no damage done during the yellow cards. So they get back to 15 men, but pretty much um, not not that long later, like the South Africans just put it back up a gear again. Like, it's like they were kind of cruising a little bit during the yellow card period. And you're up by as much as you are. You can kind of experiment a little bit. It's just, I think it's kind of natural. Sometimes the kind of killer instinct just goes back a, a notch. But once the Aussies got back 15, they kind of brought it back in. Seven phases, Peter Steff gets held up. Then Cooper uh, from the goal line dropout puts it out on the full. So it's kind of another error. And then South Africa keep pushing. There's a deliberate knock on as they try to push wide, and uh, who is it? Bloody Vunivalu. He had a bit of a mare, folks, sadly for him. 
Uh, there was a bit of talk about, you know, is he going to dominate physically over a smaller opponent? Well, no, is the answer. Um, yeah, penalty try and yellow card. So it's a second penalty try. The scoreboard is starting to look really messy. Peter Steff seems pretty determined to get a try. He does get one on 75 minutes. Uh, the box were just relentless from close range. It was his namesake who'd carried it uh, one phase before, but then Peter Steff's able to go over after Thomas had had that big carry. So, man, 43-5. I mean, there was a big scrum before that as well. But, geez, it's it's getting out of hand, isn't it? 43-5. Australia, they do bookend the game by getting the first and the last tries. Carter Gordon, who's come on and maybe is asking for a start in the next game, um, they run it out their own half. He puts a grubber through for Corin Betty. Corin Betty gets it back to Gordon, who's able to kind of canter over for the try. So try on debut for him. As I said, maybe give him a start next week because, yeah, 43-12. That's, that's pretty messy. But, um, yeah, like I said, I do think the Aussies had a few more chances that they should have taken in that first half. But the stats were pretty telling by halftime. Uh, full-time stats, like the, the box had 63% possession. They had 684 metres to 313. They had 60% territory second half especially. 12 clean breaks to 5. Like, oh man, they were just cutting loose, weren't they? Penalties conceded for the Aussies is the big, big issue. And it was an issue under Dave Rennie as well. Uh, 13 to 3. Two yellow cards to zip. You're not going to win that many games with that kind of... Yeah, with that kind of officiating going against you. I mean, you got to be you got to be better than that. I mean, Vuni Valu concedes four penalties on his own. For a winger, that's not right. Like, sometimes you're number seven or six in South Africa. You know, getting a bit over-eager at the breakdown will concede three or so. Mara Toja has been known to concede three or four, but your winger shouldn't be conceding four penalties. Goodness gracious me. Uh, Aronson gets man of the match. Three tries, 73 metres, four clean breaks. Esther Hazen had five defenders beaten. He's a big unit. Moody... Didn't get on the board, but 121 metres and three clean breaks. Like, those South African wingers, this is without bloody Colby as well, were just looking dangerous. Formulan, top tackler for the box with eight. Uh, but as I said, they didn't have to do that much defending, especially in the second half. Corin Betty, 72 metres, four defenders beaten and a couple of clean breaks. Slipper and Ikitao both make 13 out of 14 tackles, but ultimately, not the best day at the office for the Aussies. And boy... Did the South Africans cut loose? A big bonus point win. They are off to New Zealand for round two. Some of the players will already be here because they've been kind of set over early. Uh, the Wallabies are back home to the Pumas. For you guys in the States, if you missed it or want to watch the upcoming games, they're on Flow Rugby. So I'll put a link down in the description to Flow. If you want to sign up and watch the games, there you go. But man, you guys let us know your thoughts. Dominant. Dominant from the box. Where to for the Wallabies from here? It's only game one under Eddie, so certainly a chance to fine-tune, but they're going to have to do it bloody quick. Box at Eden, not Eden Park, Mount Smart next week. How do you rate their chances? You guys listening to your thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.